We're going to talk about the blueprint that allows PGA Tour players to shoot the scores that they shoot. It's not an enigma how these guys do it, it's just they have a good game plan where most people don't. A lot of people go out and think, if you're going to play like those guys, you have to birdie every single hole. It's not true. So let's break it down. Let's break down the golf course. So let's start with the par fives. This is where you're going to do all of your scoring or most of your scoring. The reason being is, is most par fives, if you hit it long enough, you can get to them in two, which means you're on or near the green in two shots. So if you get it up and down or you two putt, that's a birdie. So par fives are where we're going to score the most. Par fives, we want to play the four par fives, four under par. Now we're going to talk about easy par fours. On a golf course, there's usually about six easy par fours. And what I mean by an easy par four is you're going to hit your tee shot and on your second shot, you're hitting a wedge in. We need to get so good with our wedges that when we have a wedge in our hand, it's like there's blood in the water. And what we're trying to do is either make it or make a birdie. On most golf courses, we're going to get about six of those on average. Easy par fours. We're gonna get six. Now, let's be realistic here. We're not gonna birdie all six. I would say we're gonna birdie one, two, maybe three. So let's take the average of that. We're gonna birdie two of those. That means we play the easy par fours, two under par. Now I'm gonna group the next eight holes into the same category. Well, that'd be the par three. So there's four par threes on a golf course and then four hard par fours. And what I mean by hard par fours are par fours where we're not gonna have a wedge in our hand. We've got Par threes and hard par fours. How are we going to play those holes? We don't need to make birdie with seven iron in our hand. What we need to do is give ourselves the best opportunity to maybe have a chance at making birdie, but not making bogeys. In the early 2000s, Tiger Woods was absolutely incredible that when he missed offline with an iron, he aired towards the center part of the green, not short side, more frequently than any other player. By design, he was making it to where he would be on the green when he had those long shots into those hard par fours and par threes. So what we're trying to do is get it towards the middle of the green, and since we don't three putt, okay, we, we practice our speed and we get the ball close to the hole on our first putt, we're gonna play those even par, both of them. Par threes, even par, par fours, even par for a total of even par. So that's 18 holes. We've played them six under. If we add them all up, that's six under par. Now, once again, let's be realistic. Are we going to make some mistakes out there? Absolutely. Maybe we don't birdie one of the par fives. Maybe we only birdie one of the easy par fours, or maybe we make a bogey on, on a couple of these hard holes. So let's say we make two mistakes while we're out there. Now we're four under par, 68. That doesn't seem like, oh, the guys out there, they shoot 62s and 63s. They don't shoot them every day. I'll tell you this, next time you watch a golf tournament, somebody shoots 62 in the first round, 10 under, how many times in that golf tournament does 40 under par win? It doesn't. We're trying to score over four days. We're four under on this round of golf. So if you're on the PGA Tour, you play four rounds. Four under times four is 16 under par. All right? I'll tell you this, if you could shoot 16 under par in every PGA Tour event, I looked this up this morning, this year you would have won 14 times, including all three majors, and finished second six times. So right now, if you were to shoot 16 under in every PGA Tour event, you would be on track to play the absolute best PGA Tour year of all time, and you'd be number one in the world with three majors under your belt with a chance to win a fourth next week at the Open Championship. This is our blueprint for scoring. Now we have to talk about how we're going to do it and how we're gonna fit our practices and our skill levels into this game plan. As we do that, we can decide what we're gonna focus our attention on when we practice. If you were to ask me, I would say that driving the golf ball is the most important part of the golf game. I'm a strong advocate for that, if you drive it hard and straight, you can take advantage of more par fives. You're gonna have a shorter distance in, you're gonna be able to hit it closer to the greens, you're gonna get it on the green more frequently. Easy par fours, we're gonna have more wedges from the fairway so you can't hide a flag from us because I can spin the golf ball behind a bunker. 
par fours, hard par fours. If I'm driving the ball well and it's hard down the middle of the fairway, I'm gonna have a shorter club in. We all know this. If I'm hitting an eight iron versus a four iron, I'm gonna be able to hit it onto the middle of the green a lot easier. Practicing the driver is probably one of the most important things we can do. If you look at you know, the last few years, Rory McIlroy, probably the best driver of the, the golf ball on the planet, when it comes to being able to hit it far and hit it straight. You look at DeChambeau over the last five years, really bulking up to try to hit it further. The reason he was doing that is so he could take even more advantage of the par fives where other people couldn't and hit it closer to those easy par fours so he had an even shorter wedge in. So driving the golf ball is something that you should be practicing constantly. Now, to add a point to these par fives, the three best seasons on the PGA Tour by any individual was Tiger Woods in 2001, Tiger Woods in 2004, and Tiger Woods in 2008. If that doesn't speak to you, I don't know what will. This is the blueprint. Now you gotta get out there and practice. Uh, make sure you're practicing your driver. If you're one of those guys out there trying to compete with the best players in the world, understand this so you're not taking any undue risks on these holes right here. You're just trying to take advantage of the holes that you can take advantage of. And I promise if you do that, you'll relax a little bit more. You'll realize, hey, I don't have to birdie every hole. I don't have to hit it to five feet with a six iron. And you can score better and make fewer mistakes. It's not an enigma, it's just mathematics. Get out there and practice if you're trying to make it there. I think you can do it. If you can't, call me. I work with a lot of really high level players. For your weekend warrior, this is the goal. So where should you practice? I would say driver. Absolutely, make sure you can hit the driver good. We all know that the game gets a lot easier if we drive the ball well. Stop listening to me in the golf house, drawing up the blueprint. Get out there and practice. Practice the things you need to practice. Thank you for listening. I hope this uh, encourages or inspires somebody to go out there and be great. 